As first reported by Bob Nightingale and now confirmed by Ken Rosenthal, the Astros have finalized a deal with Jose Abreu. Okay, well, that was one of the places where you thought he might end up being. The Cubs was another place that I thought made sense for Jose Abreu. I guess we have to look at this now when we're talking about Jose Abreu in the context of what did he mean to the White Sox as a team and as an organization and to the fan base? You know, because he he has a he ended up on a lot of the top ten, top five lists. But I actually think that he, I don't know, like there's something about him. Like I remember when he first came up, and you're going, I I remember Kenny had done the scouting work on him and it had had was really big into getting him to the major leagues. And then he gets here and all of the things that people had said about him ended up being true. It's an amazing success story. It's unbelievable. It's, it's a harrowing story too. Eating the passport and all that. Yeah. And now look at him, you know, that he he's been a success. He's been an MVP. He'll now be in a position to win a championship with Houston. And I think that he's he was a great White Sox, and should be should be. I, I think he is appreciated. I don't want to act like he's not. I think that Jose Abreu has been someone that people have felt has been a a worthy successor to Paul Konerko. He will. He finishes his White Sox career seventh in franchise history in offensive WAR at thirty two point eight. Behind only Frank Thomas, Luke Appling, Eddie Collins, Minnie Mignoso, Nelly Fox, and Paul Konerko, and ahead of Carlton Fisk, Robin Ventura, and Ray Durham. Mm. It's pretty cool. As far as slugging percentage goes, those only ahead of him in White Sox history at 506, Frank Thomas, Jim Tomey, Jermaine Dye, Mags Ordonez, Zeke Benura. Behind him, Carlos Quentin, Shoeless Joe Jackson, Carl Reynolds, and Paul Konerko. Yep. Konerko, for a lot of White Sox fans, like he is the avatar for that time in White Sox history. Tough guy, hard worker, also good. Abreu's similar. Probably more talented than Pauly, like as a hitter. Maybe not as a slugger, but as a hitter, more talented. And I don't know, like I just always got a real solid vibe from him. And this is amazing. Where do you think Jose Abreu ranks on the White Sox all-time list in home runs? On the White Sox all-time list? He's seventh. He's third. He's third? Frank Thomas had 448 as a White Sox. Paul Konerko had 432. Jose Abreu had 243. I would have thought that Robin would have more than him. Nope. Those behind Abreu were Harold at 221, Fisk at 214, Mags at 187, Ventura 171, wow. Jermaine Dye 164, Bill Melton 154, and Carlos Lee 152. Doot, 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 doot. Third all-time in White Sox home runs. So let me go back to September, or I guess technically October, when... You have this weird thing where Jose Abreu isn't in the lineup. And then there were questions asked of Miguel Cairo, like, um, what do you mean he's not playing tomorrow? Because if that was it, then that was it. And then then the White Sox being like Hamana, 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 and then Jose being an adult and being like, No, 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 I did this. I wanted to watch Miguel Cairo manage. That's why I'm not in tomorrow's lineup. You know, like that, mm-hmm. that, that feels a little worse now that he's actually going to another team. That now that we know that he's going to another team feels a little worse, especially that team. Cause you know what he's going to do there with where the Crawford boxes are and everything else. Man, like, like that, there's an opportunity for uh-huh. Pito to, uh, huh. Pito could have like 75 extra base hits next year. And, and it, 
here's the other part, and we've been discussing it since since we we got to the end of the season. Three guys on that team last year that you would hope would be a model for the other guys that are on the team because they they embody the the hits principle. Smart guys that play hard and play hurt. Cueto, Andrews, Abreu. And you had to lose him. That's the, the, and, and that's my point. Like, you're likely not going to have any of those guys coming back to your team. Yeah, the shame of it was the construction of the roster, the commitments that you made to other hit first, can't field uh, guys who lack versatility, you were forced. You had to do it. I'm not mad at them for parting ways with Jose Abreu. No, neither am I. Because they they really had no choice. It's just too bad the re- for, it was almost by their own doing. Yes, they put, it was absolutely by their own doing that they, they had positional redundancies that then forced them to... You, to move on from one of the best players that's ever played for them. They had positional redundancies at the wrong positions, at the wrong end of the spectrum. You, you know where you want redundancies? Shortstop and center field. Yeah. You want you want your outfield to be all center fielders. You want your infield to be all shortstops. Th- those are the positions. And there, there would be, I wouldn't be, but there would be people that would argue that they still don't have a shortstop. Now, the great thing is, is that that Tim could be one of the redundancies. You're like, oh, well, that guy can play shortstop. Then he can play anywhere. But but think about that. Like, you have all these guys that are that were really good, like, actual baseball players. And the White Sox were desperate to have actual baseball players on the team. Ballers. And the three yes. best baseball players are probably not going to be on the team. And I can't speak to Oscar Colas. I don't know where he fits in that description, but you're right. It's it's too bad, and it and it's I, I don't know. I knew it was coming, but it still doesn't feel any better. Knowing it doesn't it doesn't make it any easier to get my mind around the fact that he he's he's gone, and there wasn't nothing they could do. Text there, White Sox fans didn't even get to say a real goodbye. That's my point. Yes, that's my point about the way that the season ended where you have this bizarre set of circumstances that somehow in the day before the last game, it gets announced that he's not playing and White Sox fans are like, what? Like we would have, we would have come to the ballpark for your bleepy team. We would have come to the ballpark just to say goodbye to him. And now we'll get the chance when, when they come to town Right, because the the game between the the first series is be, is in Houston, right? The chance will start at home, I'm guessing, because that's the first that's the White Sox first series next year is yeah. against the Astros. Yeah. But yep. I think it's yep. down there. But yeah, it kind of sucks. Not supposed to be like that in in a season where where you were looking for any sort of feel good moment. You can't have that one, like a guy that that people like and respect. And want to show love to, not really allowed to do it. And Bizarre. Who, and who was considered a clubhouse leader, particularly for the Spanish-speaking portion of the team. That That's a void now that that'll need to be replaced. And maybe there are people who are ready to step into that role. I knew it was coming. I knew they had no choice. It's just too bad. Believed to be a three-year deal. That's a little rich for me. For, for guys for Jose. 36. Man, be able to get three out of it. Man, that's great. Good for him. I was thinking he'd get a two year deal someplace. Good for him. The 847 says, let's be honest, they wouldn't have come to the ballpark. I think, I mean, they wouldn't have filled the ballpark, but I think a couple extra thousand walk up. Yeah, I think if you would have said, hey, Jose's playing his last game here, or even like, you know, people kind of mentioning it to us because we kind of knew that that was the case. Once we saw that he wasn't in in the lineup, people would have come out say, and they'll come out when he comes back. You can totally tell why they canceled Sox Fest now, right? Because they they knew they'd have to deal with this. 
They have to deal with the fact that you're right, that Cueto's gone, that all these, you uh, know. Like, yeah, let's just not do but, Sox Fest this year. But, but why, But why? like, if, if you're. Of course you should, because they're yeah. cause just the insecurity is manifest. You should do it because you feel like you're moving in the right direction, and it would then give Rick a direct line to the fan base to a certain extent to be like, hey, this is. The thing that 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 kills me about like Rick kind of hiding over the last two years, whether it's from us or particularly from the fans, is that he's adept at actually talking. This isn't Ryan Pace who might be afraid of speaking publicly. This is a guy with a law degree. It's it it's it just and an MBA. Yeah. He can handle big boy questions. At least that it's the way it's been I, in the past. I don't know. I, it's just, when, you, when you can sort of get in their headspace. You I don't want to go in there because yeah. I do understand their stuff that they got going on. It's just the finality of it. We knew it was coming and there it is. Three-year deal for Jose Abreu to join the Houston Astros. So now you've got Alvarez, who's your DH. Right. Jose's your first base. Jose is the first baseman. Yeah. I I can't believe he got three years. But hey, if they paying, Take might it. as well. Take it. Boy, he's going to just feast in that park. Did Alvarez play any outfield? I don't know. That's like Eloy level, isn't it? I'm just trying to think. It. And now you don't even, the way that he hit in the playoffs, like you can forget about your lefty lefty stuff too. Man, that guy. Talk about a, a baller. I wonder how quickly is, is Tannehill going to work around, work on his. Oh, uh, yeah, he's his right. He's got his, his goodbye. Open. He probably has one. You ready. think it's already half in the can? Yeah. Because the, the writing was on the wall. I can't imagine he doesn't. I'm, I'm guessing the Goodfellas treatment is a thing that happens. Looks like Alvarez played 56 games in left field last there you, season. There you go. Okay, well, then you can you can stop rolling and he can pick it up and it's a double. There you go. Just, left field being a place where you can put someone who isn't, who's primarily a hitter. Did he play? The 847 said he played left in the World Series. Did, I guess he did. Okay. So, see? Now there are some DH opportunities for Jose Abreu, too. 773 says what this does, it puts an exclamation point on how weird and stupid last year was for the Sox. Yeah. And just what a waste of... The, not just that. It, it. What a waste the last two years were. Well, well think because about that. Because you made it so it kind of had to end like this. Yeah, but think, and think about that in connection to Jose Abreu. If we go back two years, what are we talking about? Age 34 and 35. We're talking MVP, about him being the, M the like, MVP. You're coming out of Jose Abreu's MVP season. Into Tony La Russa. Into Tony La Russa. God darn it. God, it was so dumb. It was so avoidable and so dumb and such a waste. God, I hate it. I hate the last two White Sox years. Yep. And they're still... Every time they do something now, it makes me think about it. Every time they talk about their budget. And every time they talk about what, what's left of Yasmani Grandal. Playing first base. Ah, darn it. I'm going to do this to myself again. I'm going to talk myself into another snit over this. And I don't want to. Well, that's but why they canceled Sox Fest. I have to have Cause, my, my cause own private Sox Fest. We're, Dan, come on down. Come on down. Out of the 108? Yeah. I wasn't invited yet. I'm inviting you. I'm okay. on. I'm on the panel. Oh, okay. So I'm inviting you. Okay. It's uh sa Saturday, January seventh at Reggie's. Come through. I'll buy you a beer. I mean, I owe you a glass of wine. So. Yes, you do actually. So so come on through. All right. Herbie's on the panel too. You get to see the dear boy himself. The dear boy himself. <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll do our own thing. But it here's my hope. We got our own thing. Shout out to Heavy D and the boys. R.I.P. Um, the trouble, the trouble T Roy too. Um, if the White Sox continue to hopefully improve their team, then maybe we can forgive. Them. But you're right. Any time that you talk oh. about the White Sox, it's hard to get over the wasted opportunity. 
that was in front of them. There's no way to feel better about it. None. None at all. There's no way to feel better about what those last two years were. No. <sighs> the, and you know why it hurts so bad? Shout out to Lauren Hill. It hurts so bad because we all saw it coming. Everybody Everyone it. saw it coming. Everybody called it. Including immediately. the general manager of the White Sox. Im- Im- immediately. We all yeah. saw it. And then we had to live it. Our, everything crumbling around us. We had, to, we had to live what we knew was coming for two years. And then, then the White Sox as an organization started to, to, to be gaslit and then started doing some gaslighting. They were like, oh, well, I guess this is the world that we live in now, so... We better start acting like it's great. It wasn't great. All for that guy. For that guy. For that guy. 